we didn't think about this problem, did we? <laughs> Hi all, Mark here with the Exiles. I'm joined today by John, uh, one of our senior uh, members from our barking club. Uh, and today we're going to talk about the play that lots of people said would never work. Um, I think this mentality has changed a bit over the years, but I remember the very first time, I think it was on our old channel, that I shared a video of this and the comments were unbelievable. It was, uh, you know, that play would never work under pressure. Uh, it's one of Fiori's plays where he's just showing off. Um, and despite arguing the fact at the time that it's a perfectly valid and perfectly workable play, Nevertheless, there was still quite a lot of, uh, you know, doubt. Okay, so we're going to cover that play today. Cover that play today, um, and I'm going to explain to you why it's perfectly valid, perfectly workable. So this play is from the Sixth Master of Dagger. It's the sixth play of the Sixth Master of Dagger. There's two principal ways you can do this play. One is influenced by the plays that come before it, so play number four and play number five, uh, and the other one is um, just taking the play as a standalone principle. So. What we're told to do is as the dagger attack comes in, we're told to make our six master cover and to keep the cover, okay? And we'll do this on both sides and in a minute we'll put masks on and we'll, I'll show you under pressure. But I'm here, I've made a cover. Now, before we get into the technique, it's worth saying two things. One, this is going to be from him, from John, a powerful attack, okay? So I have to make sure I've got good structure with my cover. The second thing is that he's not going to just stay there, he's going to move, okay? Which is why I need to maintain the cover and I need to move straight away, okay? I don't have time to think, right, what play am I gonna do? As soon as the cover's there, I'm going. And I'll explain when we pressure test in a minute why I decide to do this play. In either case, the play, we do it in two ways. The first way is to maintain the cover on the arm to bring it down, which then puts his wrist out of position. Okay, and all I do is pull this back to my pocket and I'll get a disarm, okay? And we're not gonna do the disarm just yet, we'll do it in a second when we, uh, when we put our masks on, away from this brook that's running underneath this, uh, this platform that we're on. But let's do that again. So, attack comes in, I make the cover, maintain the cover the whole time as I bring it down. It's the point that's doing the levering at this point, okay? So if I go back up, point goes in and I bring it down, okay? And then to get the disarm, I pull, basically. I pull the handle into my own pocket and that will get the disarm, okay? So that's option number one and that's influenced by the plays that come before it where we're basically seen to rotate and get over the top of their arm, getting them nice and low. Option number two, if we took the play, because we don't know either way, we take the play as it is. So it's upright, we're maintaining the cover. And as you can see from the image, which has obviously been on the screen, it looks like the disarm is starting high, okay? So because we don't know for sure, we, tra we practice both options. So this option is same principle, making the cover, okay? But I'm doing everything high. Now I can't do the disarm here because one, I don't want him to drop his dagger into the brook, but I don't want to hit him in the face. But basically it's starting high, okay? And what I always say in my head to remind me of this play is point in, butt out. So up, point into the forearm or just behind it. And I basically pull this down. If John covers his face, I basically just pull this down and that will get me a disarm. Having done this very many times, I can say that a good nine times out of 10, you'll get that disarm, no problem. It actually works a little bit better if they start recovering because you get closer to the face. You get closer to the face um, and uh, it actually, as they try and pull their arm back, it has a higher success rate because you're hooking into the forearm and pulling it down. So those are the two options we use. We're gonna chuck our masks on and we're gonna just do this with a bit of power. Okay, so apologies we can't hear me through my mask very well. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna do it with some intensity, okay? We're not sparring or anything. We're just, uh, just building up the intensity a little bit. There's a couple of things to bear in mind. So one, like with all dagger fighting, it gets messy, okay? Nothing really works as clean as what you'll see in the manuscript. A cover like this will go wrong. And if it goes wrong, I will give you some options for what to do, okay? Second thing is obviously um, we, while we are building up the intensity, we're still not trying to kill each other, okay? So we're not gonna take it to that proper full intensity that we would, let's say, if we were sparring, okay?
Okay, so we did a couple there at pressure. Um, what I didn't show you is if it goes really wrong. So let's just do that now. A bit closer now. Come on here. So let's say I make the cover and I make the turn, but I don't get the disarm. So we're here, make the turn, but for some reason I haven't got the disarm. We're having trouble today because these are a bit too short for this action. Okay, well, I've still wrapped the arm. I've still got control of it. So I'll keep hold of this bind and I'll just stab him. Yeah, if he tries to recover, he's gonna struggle. And at that point I've stabbed him three or four times. So always have plans for when things go wrong because they do go wrong, okay? So that's the first option. The next option um, is if we just take the play as a standalone play, so ignoring what's come before it, because you could argue we have no evidence of the full turn with this play, okay? So we'll treat it as if we don't know that they exist, okay? Now this is a higher risk option, but it's there. So we make the cover, okay? Point in to the forearm, but out. Okay, now with slightly longer trainers, this would be easier. It's a bit difficult because they're quite short. But we're up, we go into the arm. If I can get the point in the forearm, brilliant, but it's the turn, look, it's the turn that I'm after. Now, if we try and do this a little bit quicker, I'm doing that in front of his body. And we've lost the dagger again in the long grass. So, <laughs> I'm doing that turn in front of his body. So it's a higher risk, okay? I don't have the safety of coming around the back of my opponent. So it carries a little bit more, it carries a little bit more risk. If I'm just to explain a little bit about the mechanics of that. So what I'm doing is I'm coming up six master. Now, if I'm unarmored, obviously I can, I need to be a little bit further away. But if I'm armored, which I always imagine I am when I put my mask on, I can afford to be a bit closer and I don't necessarily have to worry about catching anything on their head. From here, I'm basically just doing this turn. If we angle like this slightly, what you can see, hopefully, is this. Point goes into the forearm and I wrap the arm around, watch. And that's what gives me the disarm, okay? So if John uses his left hand to cover his face real quick, watch, in, and I pop it out. The reason why we say cover the face is because sometimes it can flick into the eyes, so you should really do this with a mask on. Um, and then the last thing about this is just a little supplemental thing. Keep hold of the arm. Okay, so as I've done the turn, I'm gonna transition the grip onto the arm, okay? Because I don't want him to be fight effective. There's an arm here, okay? There's little things like that with dagger fighting that you just pick up over time, okay? So we're in, bosh, there's the disarm. I'm gonna keep hold of it, look. I'm even gonna open him up. If he's armored, that's a great target for me. And so on and so forth. So there's two subtle variations on the play. One is to roll right the way around. One is to do it in front of your body. This does work at speed, it does work under pressure, and incidentally, it does also work with knives. So hopefully that explains that. Until the next one.